this is Mina from Networks from A to Z. We are in India. Welcome to Interviews from A to Z. Today I have the pleasure to talk to Aston Murray, an amazing photographer who is going to tell us about his philosophy about art. Thank you for accepting my interview. How's everything, Aston? Very good, thanks so much. Very good. How's the New Delhi treating you? It's been great after a good minute. Okay. What is art? Art for me is an expression of, um, you know, individual. It can be something that an artist is really passionate about. So for me, it's an expression of my philosophy of life. And how do you express this philosophy? Because you're, you're a musician, you're a photographer. How do you express art? Yeah, I, you know, for me, there's one little thing that ties everything together. I believe in actually leaving behind something. Like, uh, I believe that art, at the end of the day, should benefit people. So I try to tie, tie in my art and music in order to help people in any way I can. So are you first a musician or a photographer? You know, I see it uh, both tied up together because as a musician, I'm a composer. So I compose with notes. And as a, artist, as a photographer, I compose with lights. So for me, it's all composition by different forms. What, what instruments do you play? Only the guitar? My primary instrument is the guitar. But of course, because I'm a composer, like, I write my lyrics, I uh, write other instruments. How about photography? How does photography fit into your artistic concept? So, photography one is, uh, because now I'm also into commercial weddings and all, um, I feel like as a networker, as a people's person, as someone who wants to tell people's story, like I feel like I'm documenting this photography. You know, it's like documenting people's lives, doc documenting as I'm traveling. So, so it's a way to tell a story. Exactly, it's a way to tell a story. And my music too. I tell stories through music. What what musical project did you work on? So in the last few months. Yes, uh, my last work was uh, a music video <coughs> called. Uh, Father to the Abused in Chicago, and it was a collective work with uh, many different artists, including painters and sound artists, video artists. So that was my last work, and it was a fundraising project for. For actually, we started the project called Faces and Stories. So it's a collective uh, work for artists to come together and tell the stories of people, but not just tell stories, but try to bring a difference through the stories. So what was the purpose of the fundraiser? So uh, the Face and Stories project, we started as a collective um, friends who are artists. So we take one topic at a time where, for example, uh, back in 2015, we took up the issue of sex trafficking and uh, boy, being a voice for women who are abused. So then we wrote a song on that. And then uh, the artist painted and uh, now we have a video on YouTube that people are watching. A lady in Canada watched it and bought the painting. Wow, that's and amazing. now the money is going towards like an organization. Okay. So we want to do art that actually helps people. Uh, as we tell the story of the people. So once again, there has to be a story in both your photography, your music, any art that you create. Yes, yes. What message would you like to send out? Yeah, um, the message I would send out to people is really just like Last week I wrote on my page, Facebook page, that uh, at the end of the day it's what, how well you love people and not what you achieve. Because many people have achieved a lot and they've disappeared from the face of the earth. Correct. But I feel like when you love people well, you're remembered well. And I think we can do that with our art. We can love people well with our art. Alright, you live in India. You're, you were born in India but you've traveled all over the world. Yes. How do you see the world today as a, as a global citizen? Yeah, the, the world is a beautiful place. You know, I, I think of course there are a lot of like mess around the world, but in spite of that, like uh, I feel like it is a beautiful place. It's like a broken existence that's longing for something greater. All right, let's go back to your photography. Uh, you said you mentioned you do both commercial photography. How do you balance the two? commercial photography and, and art? Yes. Or is there art in commercial photography? Yes, very much. But um, with commercial photography, the thing is, it depends on your client. Because if your client doesn't want art, then you can't be doing art 
because that's not what he wants. But sometimes you meet clients that are like full on like, okay, do your work, but do art as well. But then, yes, the way it balances out is I do my commercial to help my art, you know. So at the end of the day, if I have money for the art, I would move to art, you know, and more. I would lead towards the art. But for, at the moment, my commercial supports my art, <coughs> artistic uh, endeavors. What's your next project? Well, my next project is actually uh, with a Romanian photographer. All right. Yes. Uh, she's coming from Chicago, and uh, we are going to travel for five weeks in India. And uh, we're going to use uh, the pictures we come up with to fund a children's project. We are uh, raising funds to educate the children through an organization called the Kids Garden, which is based in Ireland. Wow, amazing. And how about your music project? Yes, as far as music, because I'm a composer, uh, my next project is like I'm uh, just like looking and hunting for a lot of like young artists who have not like taken flight yet and I want to do like a collaborative work where I, I want to showcase them through some of my projects so that's the musical project side Alright, I'm not too much into music so I, I listen and I accept everything you can say but I'm, I'm learning more about photography and editing well, what three tips would you give me as a, as a beginner photographer? I'm, I'm at the lowest level what three tips would you give me? Mm. Mm, that because there's so much. Um, if I would just just start with three, I would say, yeah, look for unusual angles. You know, because angles is what gives uh, photographers like their um, their difference. Because everyone shooting at this angle, like for example, one father gave the photo photo to like a kid running around, and the kid's perspective was so different from what we normally see. So angles can really change things. And the um, second thing I would say is, um, I think very soon enough you'll have to know how to master a manual. If you are in any sort of like uh, uh, camera that has like manual option, then don't just shoot in auto. Because okay, they laugh me at this moment. <laughs> auto and the photo just so, comes up. Right. I think you have to make effort to, to shoot manual. And when you shoot manual, uh, the third thing is going to be, you're going to deal with three things. The ISO, the f-stop, and the shutter speed. Okay, I'll Google them all. Yeah, so it's just a balance of these three things which you need to master. So once you do that, I think you have gone to the next level. Oh, okay. sure. How about editing? What software do you use for editing? I think I've dabbled a couple of software, but by far Lightroom is the king of editing. And again, they're Adobe. Photoshop line, of, but Lightroom is like the small brother of Photoshop, and uh, Lightroom can deal with like massive amount of pictures. Whereas Photoshop is like fine tuning a lot, uh, but for me, uh, Lightroom all the way. You know, I use it quite a bit. In fact, I don't even have Photoshop on my. Oh. Camera. I don't have all right, let's switch gears a bit. Uh, this is my first time in India. Okay. Uh, I've seen New Delhi. I've seen Agra. Where are you from? Yeah. I am from Nagaland, Northeast India. How would you compare Nagaland with New Delhi? Very, very different. Like uh, it's, I think it's almost like two different countries because Nagaland is uh, tribal. Like we have about uh, you know 70 major tribes compact into this little place. You know, you travel for 30 kilometers and the language changes. You can't understand them anymore because all these tribes we have different dialects that are so different from each other. So culture changes, dress changes, food changes. So in that way, we are we are very diverse in a very small small place. You know, the diversion, the diversity is like amazing. All right. So I've seen New Delhi. I've been to Agra, been to the Taj Mahal. Okay. Plan to go to Darjeeling. Yeah. Give me two more destinations in India. Oh wow, two more destinations. I think for. Travel versus I like uh, Missouri there on the side. I think because it gives you like a good feel of like a small city on um, on the slopes, and then you can actually go to like the hills. All right. That's one because I'm like a mountain person. And, Me uh, too. I love the mountains. Yeah. 
Yeah, and then I would say if you can make it to Manali and go up to Ladakh today, that's amazing. But because I'm slightly biased, like I think Nagaland is like a virgin place. Of course. So northeast, and I would say visit Nagaland at some point. All right. Thank you so much. I'll be waiting for you in Thailand. Very much. All Romania. Thank you. And I hope one day we can open a project together. Very much. Sir. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. All right, and that was an amazing interview with Mr. Murray, an amazing photographer and musician from India. Until next time, take care.